Hello good people, I'm Dimitri and microphones on gaming headsets have been improving since 2019. We did a full ultimate microphone comparison you can check out over here, but it's 2020 and it's time to do another one. Make sure you put on some headphones so you can hear the difference between each microphone. And what I've done is I've taken the three most popular and best sounding microphones from 2019 from that video and include them here, plus all the new and latest hottest collections that have uh, launched in 2020. So that includes headsets like the Logitech G Pro X Wireless, the new Black Shark V2X from Razer, the new Cooler Master MH600 series, so the 630 and the 670, the new Mod Mic USB and Mod Mic Uni, and of course all my staples like the Logitech G Pro X with the USB sound card and with my custom blue voice settings, which actually sound pretty decent now. Of course, I have the GSP 300, my PC 37X, plus we have the Fanatic React, which is incredible for its price point, and the Cloud Orbit S with plain and negative drivers and uh, a really disappointing microphone for the price point. It will also include the Razer Kraken Ultimate. It's a USB gaming headset with pretty lighting, but uh, yeah. As usual, all the products will be linked in the description below. Make sure to check it out. So seal in those headphones. Let's begin the microphone analysis for 2020 right after this. Oh, hi. I see uni fans in your future. You and I fans. Uni fans. Introducing a really cool way to fans with Lian Lee Unifan SL120. ARGB fans that daisy chain like no other with a seamless connection via the frame. They look fantastic with double sided light show, available in black or white. And the best part one cable, four fans, with up to 16 fans total via the Uni Hub. The software is powerful, and so are the PWM fans at 1900 RPM. The Unifan SL120 by Lian Lee. Check it out below. For this microphone test, we'll be reading Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall, a fantastic take on how geography has shaped world history. And this chapter will be on the Arctic, highly recommended. When the Icemen come, they will come in force. Who has the force? The Russians. No one else has a heavy presence in the region or is as well prepared to tackle the severity of the conditions. All other nations are lagging behind and, in the case of the USA, do not appear to be even trying to catch up. America is an Arctic nation without an Arctic strategy in the region that is heating up. The effects of global warming are now showing more than ever in the Arctic. The ice is melting, allowing easier access to the region, coinciding with the discovery of energy deposits and the development of technology to get at them. All of which has focused the Arctic nation's attention on the potential gains and losses to be made in the world's most difficult environment. Many of the countries in the region have competing claims, which they haven't bothered to press, until now. But there's a lot to claim and a lot to argue about. The word Arctic comes from the Greek Artikos, which means near the bear, and is reference to the Ursa Major constellation, whose last two stars point towards the North Star. The Arctic Ocean is almost 5.4 million square miles. This might make it the world's smallest ocean, but it is still almost as big as Russia and one and a half times the size of the USA. The continental shelves on its ocean bed occupy more space proportionally than any other ocean, which is one of the reasons why it can be hard to agree on areas of sovereignty. The Arctic region includes lands in parts of Canada, Finland, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden, and the USA. It is a land of extremes. For brief periods in the summer, the temperature can reach 26 degrees Celsius in some places, but for long periods in winter, it plunges to below minus 45. Ouch. There are expanses of rock scoured by the freezing winds, spectacular fjords, polar deserts, and even rivers. It is a place of great hostility and a great beauty that has captivated people for millennia. The first recorded expedition was in 330 BCE by a Greek marina called Patheus of Massilia, who found a strange land called Thule. Back home in the Mediterranean, few believed his startling tales of pure white landscapes, frozen seas, and strange creatures, including great white bears. But Patheus was just the first of many who, over the centuries, to record the wonder of the Arctic and to succumb to the emotions it evokes. As for the first person to reach the North Pole, well, that's a tricky one given that even though there's a fixed point on the globe denoting its position, below it, the ice you're standing on is moving, and without GPS equipment, it is hard to tell exactly where you are. Sir Edward Perry, minus GPS, tried in 1827, but the ice was moving south faster than he could move north, and he ended up going backwards, but he did at least 
survive. The impressive effort of Shinji Kazama of Japan, who in 1987 became the first person to reach the North Pole on a motorbike. Mr. Kazama was so interpret as not to have relied on a shrinking polar ice cap and is sort of the man who would have written through a blizzard in order to get into the history books, but there's no doubt that there is now less ice to cross. That the ice is receding is not in question. Satellite images over the past decade clearly show that the ice has shrunk, only the cause is in doubt. Most scientists are convinced that man is responsible, not merely natural climate cycles, and that the coming exploitation of what is unveiled will quicken the pace. And let's conclude with the ModMic USB. The effects of the melting ice won't just be felt in the Arctic. Countries as far away as the Maldives, Bangladesh and the Netherlands are at risk of increased flooding as the ice melts and the sea levels rise. These knockoff effects are why the Arctic is a global and not just a regional issue. So all the headsets that you just heard, except for the wireless and the USB stuff, was recorded into my Sound Blaster X3 just for convenience. Because I found very little difference in external USB sound cards and motherboard microphone inputs and the quality that you get from either. It's a very interesting video, make sure to check it out. And now let's hear noise cancellation that is built into the microphone, again, without applying any software or noise cancellation in the filters. This is just what the microphone hears. Noise cancellation on this headset is absent, which is a good thing because you have beautiful vocals, but it does pick up everything that is absolutely in your environment, like these keyboard strokes. This is what the React headset sounds like with keyboard strokes in the background. Um, not much noise cancellation happening. This is what the noise suppression sounds like on the GSP-300. It does have like built-in noise cancellation that is via the microphone, not via the software. And I'm typing on the keyboard. Yeah, it's okay. This is what the noise cancellation and suppression sounds like on the Black Shark V2X headset. Typing on my keyboard. And let me know what you think. This is what noise cancellation sounds like on the ModMic Uni. And this is supposed to have an actual noise cancellation capsule. So we'll hear how it does with me typing on my MX Brown keys. This is how noise canceling this microphone on G Pro X is. I'm typing on my keyboard and this is going directly into my Sound Blaster X3. No blue voice enabled here. Then I have my custom Broadcaster 2 preset. So blue voice is enabled. Let's hear how it tries to cancel out all the keystrokes in the background. This is what the noise cancellation sounds like on the Cloud Orbit S. Typing on the keyboard, we'll hear. Next up is the G Pro X wireless without any blue voice enabled to hear with noise cancellation, if any, is present. I'm trying to cancel out the keystrokes. This is what the noise cancellation sounds like on the wireless Cooler Master MH670 gaming headset. It's a very comfortable pair, by the way, my gosh. Noise cancellation on the Razer Kraken Ultimate, this USB microphone I'm typing on the keyboard. One thing though is the cable noise from this thing. Oh my gosh. It's like I, I hear that more than I hear myself. The mod mic USB actually has a noise cancellation capsule. Right now we're listening to the omnidirectional, so it's trying to capture everything. But if we switch to the unidirectional, so the unidirectional capsule has been engaged and it should compress more of that background keyboard strokes. Let me know which one sounds better to you between the two modes. I think the omnidirectional sounds much better in terms of vocal detail and clarity as this one sounds a bit too compressed in my opinion. Noise cancellation on the PC37X is slightly present. It does try to mute out all the background keyboard strokes. So yeah. So based on everything you just heard, which microphone sounded best to your ears? After listening back to what I had just recorded, a few microphones really stand out and it's quite impressive what both the MH630 and the Black Shark V2X deliver in terms of vocal clarity. They're also the cheapest headsets in this roundup. So like what's happening? The React headset, for example, had a bit more bass but lacked in the detail like you would hear with the Black Shark V2X or the MH630. The PC37X had good tones, but the cable noise is actually audible in the microphone signal, which is kind of unfortunate. And the GSP300, in comparison to like the best microphones, sounds a bit subpar. The disappointing surprises come from ModMic. The ModMic Uni is 
<laughs> what is that even? Both of my wireless headsets, the G Pro X Wireless and the MH670 sounded pretty bad in terms of like really compressed, non-detailed, like far away sound. But of course, all of our ears and headphones and audio sources are different. So you let me know which one sounded best to your ears in the comments. As usual, everything will be linked in the description below for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.